I am an avid reader, and more than anything, I want each of my children to be avid readers. When my first child was born, I was working on my bachelor's degree in education. During that period of my life, my greatest question was, how could I teach my child? I craved information. I read anything. I read everything I could find on the best way to teach her. I think my greatest fear was that I would fail her and send her off into the world missing some piece of vital information. One night as I was rocking her to sleep when she was just a few months old, an answer came to me. It wasn't about teaching her everything. It was much simpler than that. It was about teaching her how to be a learner. I needed to teach her where to get the information she needed. Of course, then the thought branched out to how to teach her to be able to read. I knew instantly that she needed to know how to read. If she didn't know how to read, she wouldn't be able to get the answers to her questions. Sitting with my mother in her living room, I explained to her my desire, but I didn't want to wait until my little girl went to school for her to learn to read. I wanted to give her a boost. I wanted her to know more and to be able to find what she wanted. I wanted to capitalize on her curiosity immediately. Excitedly, my mom ran up the stairs and brought down a book entitled How to Teach Your Baby to Read. I had seen it on her shelf. I had helped her to pack it up many times as we moved during our lives, and she shared how she had used these simple methods with her children and knew they would work. I have included a link to this in the description for the video. I could hardly wait to get back home though, and I dove into the book and I read it cover to cover in one day. Then I went about implementing the practices in the book. It was so simple. Soon I had an eight month old baby that could read about two dozen words. I was thrilled about her learning growth and I quickly brought her to Purdue University where I was studying and had her demonstrate what she could do to my professors. Of course she was a prodigy and there would never be anyone as smart or as intelligent as my little girl and I was sure of it. So I made sure to teach her by reading by example. Each day we read children's books together. My finger followed along the words as I read. I read out loud what I was reading for myself even. I read quietly and I let her see that I enjoyed reading too. When she was too old for naps, we renamed nap time to quiet time and filled it with reading. Quiet time became my favorite time of the day when each child would pull out a pillow, a blanket, a book and sprawl across the living room floor or family room floor and furniture. I loved listening to them and listening about what they were reading. It was exciting that one of their favorite things was to laugh at a funny part or to share something or the day that my oldest son cried while he was reading because his favorite character had died. This continued and each of my six children read. They love to read. Sadly though, I started cursing that they could read so much when my Amazon and my Barnes and Noble bookstore trips became extremely expensive. Of course we use the library as well, but there are times when you simply have to have a new release, like when each of those Harry Potter books came out. There were few greater joys in my life than when my children were with me and they shared with me what they were learning and what they were reading. Did you ever want to teach your baby to read? Well, there are a few really good statistics which helps to really prove this point. For instance, the greatest amount of brain growth is going to occur between birth and age five. In fact, by age three, about 85% of a brain structure is already formed. And at birth, your baby's brain is only 25% of an adult size. By age three, however, it'll be 80% of the adult size. So you can see how much it's going to grow just within those couple of years. By age two, children who are read too regularly will display greater language comprehension, larger vocabularies, and even greater cognitive skills than their peers. Children who are read to at least three times a week by someone are twice as likely to score in the top 25% in reading and academics compared to children who read less than three times a week. There are also some interesting statistics of what happens when a child is not exposed to reading early. For instance, 37% of children are going to arrive at kindergarten without any of the skills that they need for lifetime learning. 25%, that's one in four of children in America, are going to grow up without learning how to read at all. And there is almost a 90% probability that a child will remain a poor reader at the end of fourth grade if they're a poor reader at the end of first grade. Children 
aren't reading, these are those that don't read by a grade level at the end of third grade are four times likely to drop out of high school. And of those high school dropouts, 78% of crime is committed by high school dropouts. It is staggering and all related to this one major aspect of teaching a child to read. As we move forward, we want to look at how we can teach a child to read. So Glenn Doman, who wrote the book, How to Teach Your Baby to Read, speaks about several things that you can do. First, you can start as early as 10 weeks old. I did. I started when my child was actually a newborn. Then you create flashcards. You use red ink on the flashcards because the children are very attached to and they are going to be drawn to that red ink. And then you flash it to the child just in a normal traditional flashcard style. And you can show them to them more slowly. You can talk about each other. Run your finger under the words. Um, I've seen some people who put them together, staple them together. Mine were independent, but you can do them as you wish. And as my child learned words, we also would hang them on the wall and we would point to them. We labeled household items. For instance, refrigerator had a nice flash card with a red word that said refrigerator on them. Also be sure to play some games with them. We did matching for a while where the words were written and then there were pictures and images. And my little girl would be able to match the word with the picture. Actually, all of our children were able to do that. But no matter what, make learning fun, make reading fun, make sure that they see you read and how much you enjoy it.